consider an optimist when it comes to the deployment of IPv6 and, the, and projecting when it's going to be the predominant protocol on the internet. And uh, one of the things that I did is I, I decided that I, wasn't, that I needed to check my own guesses and my own estimates. So I went to a Nanog meeting uh, a few months ago, and during a lightning talk, I, I created a poll and I put up a website where I asked three questions. When will IPv6 be cheaper than IPv4? When will IPv6 be faster than IPv4? And when will there be a significant number of IPv6 only users? And it was very interesting. Some, the, the number of people who said that IPv6 would be faster than IPv4 in a couple of years was surprising since I'd already talked about my results and other people's results that it's already faster in, on average. Um, and uh, the majority of people said that, IPv4, that IPv6 would be cheaper than IPv4 and I believe it was 2017, I don't remember for sure off, off the top of my head, but the one that really struck me was that uh, more than half of the people, and this is Nanog, so this is really well-informed network engineers in, in North America talking about when they thought there would be a significant number of V6-only users, and they said uh, the, the majority of people answered 2018 or 2019. That says to me that we need to make sure that we all have a significant deployment, that we've, we've done our work before then, so that if, that if we're right, and that does indeed come to pass, that nobody's lost connectivity, that everybody can get to everything else that is IPv6 only on the internet. <clears throat> and we also, there are also some interesting websites showing statistics of deployment over time, that uh, one of which uh, is uh, run by Eric Vinke, uh, who uh, he, sh he provides the opportunity to track statistics over time, the deployment levels of IPv6, and then extrapolate from there using various mathematical curves that you can choose to see when, when you think, based on any given set of uh, history or uh, forward-looking uh, extrapolation that you want to make, you can figure out when you think IPv6 will be uh, the predominant protocol on the internet. Very interesting stuff. And it does continue to work out. Pretty much all projections are around 2017 at the earliest, probably. 2018, maybe 2019. It's really interesting to see all of the different data sets and, and uh, speculation converging on uh, roughly the same dates. I would like to see us coordinate better to choose consciously uh, a date of 2017 or 2018 when we will all have fully deployed IPv6. Yes, this is an interesting question. Um, I mean, obviously, you we have seen in the U.S. Um, you know this you know very topic being uh, called into question. You know, obviously, with the NSA and this government spying programs. Um, in Latin America, I think um, you know there's there's um, there's you know interest in improving individual rights through um, similar sorts of uh, measures, uh, both in Brazil and. Uh, and Mexico, and um, you know, I think this is a, a very difficult question to answer. I don't think there's really a, a right answer here, but um, you know, from our perspective, um, you know, there's a lot um, that governments can do to um, protect um, these individual rights, but yet they have a huge responsibility to do so. And so, uh, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see um, as other governments um, have followed, uh, as other governments have follow, um, if will they follow the um, the uh, um, some of the lessons learned in the U.S. or, you know, will they try to uh, not fall into the same pitfalls? So I think it'll be a very interesting thing to watch in the next, you know, six months to a year. Thank you. La presentación del, del ciberobservatorio a la comunidad, lo que es la reunión de CECIT aquí en LACNIC 21 fue bastante interesante. Primero porque tenía que cambiar la percepción, la percepción negativa de lo que es el escaneo en general en, 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 como, como actividad. El escaneo, como todo el mundo sabe, es considerado una, 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 una acción antes del, de, de un ataque, una acción de reconocimiento para tú saber las vulnerabilidades, las debilidades de, de, de un sistema. Pero en este caso se hace con motivos de, de, totalmente de investigación. Se hace con la metodología de escaneo responsable, se hace de manera frontal, se hace de manera informativa. 
Entonces, eh, la reunión de esta mañana fue bastante interesante porque era, eh, se trataba de eso, de cambiar la mentalidad de la gente en cuanto a lo que es el escaneo, en cuanto es como todo, como todo. Nosotros tenemos la, usamos la analogía del radar de, de que tienen las torres de control en los aeropuertos. O sea, es como un radar donde tú estás viendo todo lo, el radar. Los radares tú ves los aviones, pero no ves lo que tienen por dentro lo, lo, de los aviones. Por tanto, no, no cambia el tema de la privacidad, no es intrusivo. Los radares, los radares tampoco le evitan que los aviones aterricen por la, por la sonda que transmiten. El ciberobservatorio es más o menos así, es un escaneo no invasivo que yo tenga una perspectiva, una imagen casi en tiempo real de lo que, de lo que es la, la, el uso de direcciones IP en, en nuestro país, por ejemplo.